Ah, the Chevy Corvette. It's as American as cheeseburgers, monster truck derbies, and Apollo Creed. Wait, was that James Brown? Ah, anyway, this is America's sports car and everyone wants to own one. Well, except for the models I'm about to list off. Hello and what's up guys, I'm Bradley and welcome back to Hot Cars. Starting off our list of Corvettes to stay away from is the 1987 Callaway Twin Turbo Corvette. What does the 1987 Callaway Twin Turbo Corvette and Windows Vista have in common? Yeah, you guessed it, they're both horribly unreliable and most intelligent people avoid them like the plague. To its credit, the 87 Callaway was a powerhouse with its twin turbocharged and twin intercooler engine. This vet could pump out a neck massaging 382 horsepower. That was impressive for 1987. The problem is that the engine also blew up on a regular basis. So, yeah, not so impressive. Number two on our list, the 1995 Corvette Pace Car. The C4 Corvettes of the mid-90s were fine examples of America's sports car. They drove well and looked cooler than an episode of Baywatch. The same can't be said for the Pace Car from 1995. Seriously, imagine a group of small children, armed with magic markers, just let loose on a sports car. It's a good thing that Chevrolet only produced 527 of these replicas because only Barbie fans were interested. 1988 Corvette Commemorative Edition Back in 1988, Chevrolet wanted to make a big deal for their 35th anniversary of the Corvette. They wanted to design a special edition that would be truly memorable, and they did exactly what they set out to do because this car was hard to forget. The commemorative vet had a white paint job, white wheels, a white steering wheel, white seats, hell, it probably had white spark plugs. Didn't go down too well with the fans, but some still sell for serious money. In fact, one was purchased recently for a staggering $350,000. I bet it was vanilla ice. The 1998 Corvette Pace Car. Okay, look away now if you thought the 95 Corvette Pace Car was bad, because the 1998 version brought this addition to a whole other level of wackiness. They really went overboard with the purple on this C5 model, and just in case it wasn't loud enough, Chevrolet gave this car bright yellow wheels, yellow seats, and eye-gouging decals. Despite its unconventional looks, the 98 Pace Car sells for more than the regular C5 convertible these days. You have to be a real joker to fork out one for these. 1984 Corvette C4. By the end of 1983, the C3 Corvette had become as dated as my sense of humor. Chevrolet's answer was the fourth generation Corvette that hit American roads the following year. The C4 Vet is considered by many as a timeless work of art, but early models weren't without their flaws. The crossfire injection fuel delivery system was problematic, the cabin was full of random noises, and the ride quality was a little too sharp for most. After all, there's nothing like a smooth ride, is there? T told you my sense of humor was outdated. 1958 Corvette. The C1 Corvette remains one of the most iconic American sports cars ever made. Its unmistakable styling, luxury, and performance were a smash hit with gearheads in the 1950s, but Chevrolet felt the need to freshen it up in 1958 and gave the car a facelift. Now, it wasn't quite that bad, but the resulting model faced a ton of criticism at that time for aspects like the fake louvers on the hood. And then there was the chrome. Lots and lots and lots of chrome. These things would make a gang of Cylons look dull. Chevrolet finally got the message from fans and took a more subtle approach to the 59 model. 1980 California 305 Corvette. This may come as a surprise to many of you, but back in the 80s, California had stringent emission requirements. The C3 Corvette's 350 cubic inch V8 was a little too wild for the Golden State, so the Corvette California 305 was created. This model featured a downsized engine and a three-speed automatic transmission. This thing was a pile of bleep. Seriously, the 5.0 liter engine in this car had a pathetic 180 horsepower, so it's understandable why there's never been a big demand for these cars. I'm so happy things are different these days. The 1979 L48 Corvette. This classic vet from the late 70s came with a 5.7 liter V8 under its tapered hood. It might surprise you then that this model only produced 195 horsepower. That's especially disappointing when you consider that this Chevy weighed 3,000 pounds. 1953 Corvette. Wait, what? The original C1 Corvette is on this list? That can't be right. Well, the early models of the C1 didn't exactly boast world-class production. The suspension was based on Chevy's sedan. The engine was the old Blue Flame 6 with a mechanical lifter, and it was only available with a two-speed gearbox. And rounding out our list of terrible Corvettes to buy, the 1975 Corvette base model. 1975 might have been a good year for music. Like a Ooh, that still sounds fresh. But it was not a good year for Corvette fans. This model year had the 350 engine and gained a catalytic converter, which meant it had a mere 165 horsepower. The 1975 base model Corvette still sold in big numbers, but it was slower than a Chevy Malibu. Boo. Chevrolet would eventually correct this model with an upgraded L82 engine, but it was too late to keep this model year off our list of infamy. Glenn Campbell wouldn't even be caught dead in one of these. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.